On today's photo moment, we're going to be talking about the brand new May 30th, 2018 updates for your Panasonic Lumix GH5, GH5S, and G9. Good morning and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live three times a week show here at youtube.com slash photojoseph every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9.30 a.m. Pacific time. You can participate live. It's great if you're here live because then you get to be a part of the chat and you get to ask questions, which is super fun. We do our best to address those questions. If not during the main show, we certainly come back to them to a Q&A afterwards, which is exactly what we're going to do today. Now, today's show is, is going to be long. This is a big one because there's a lot of stuff to cover in here. We will do timestamps so that for those of you not watching live can skip ahead to the pieces that you want, if that is what you so desire to do. But otherwise, uh, just sit along for the ride and uh, enjoy the tour of all the new things in the new updates. So let's jump into it, starting with what we're actually talking about today. So May 30th, 2018, that is today, that is today's update. We're talking about Panasonic Lumix firmware updates for three cameras, for the Lumix GH5, GH5S, and G9. You can see the version numbers on screen right there. And that is uh, that is what we're talking about here. So if you're watching this at some point way in the future, and you're like, this is old news. Well, yeah, there you go. Now you, now you know the dates. So the first thing that I want to do in here is actually show you where to get the update. Because Sometimes I know people are like, this is great. How in the heck do I do it? And the URL to do it, photojoseph.com slash Lumix update. That will redirect you to the page. And the page is this right here. This is a big, long, it's an av.jpn support Panasonic page. It'll redirect you here. So I'm just going to take you through the process of how to get this thing. It's really straightforward. So you'll get to this page. You'll see on here that there is a list of all the Lumix camera bodies and lenses, what their uh, latest updates were, if there were updates to them and then a button that says Firmware Update Service. Needless to say, you should probably go through and kind of scroll through and read some of this stuff, but I'm just going to give you the quick version of how to get there. Click on the Firmware Update Service. It takes you to another page that looks very much like the one you were just on. This one actually has some basic instructions of what's going to happen in here, how to install it. You get down to the bottom, and it says Accept. You accept that. Then that takes you to the page where you can actually get to the updates, and you'll see on here individual dates. So there's the G9. Make this a little bit bigger in here. There is the G9 version 1.1, 2018-0530, that's today, and then the GH5 and GH5S. Each one of these has their own individual download pages. Click on that, it'll open a new window, which in here you will see listed all the new features. If you're grabbing an older one or one that had previous updates, let's do the GH5, for example. If I open this up, we will see not only all the updates that are current for this version, but if you keep scrolling down, you'll see what was added in 2.2, 2.1, and so on. At the bottom of the section, so again here, this is the 2.3 section. At the bottom of that, you are going to see a link you're going to want to click on, this notice for the change of specification. This is basically an addendum to your manual. It is a couple extra page PDF that you add in to your manual so you know exactly how to use some of these new functions. So make sure that you grab that. It would be super handy when you're trying to figure out how in the heck to add these things to your, to your uh, setup. Um, and then there's the link on here as well to the Lumix Tether app. If you go all the way down to the bottom of this, you will finally get to the download button. Click on that, and off she goes. I'm not going to download it, but that will then download it from there. So once you've downloaded it, the process is actually remarkably, remarkably easy. Here's all you have to do. First of all, download the file from Panasonic, like I just showed you. Format your SD card. Put your card into your camera, format it so it's nice and clean. Stick that SD card into your computer and copy the star.bin file to the SD card. You, when you download it, it may come down as a zip, um, which will then get automatically opened to a .bin. If you double-click the .bin, it will uncompress again to some other extension. That's not what you want. You want it ending in .bin. That's the file that you need to work with, and I think that is where a lot of people tend to get kind of stuck. They're like, well, I double-clicked it until it would stop decompressing, and now I got this thing. No. The .bin file is what you want. So you simply copy the .bin file to the SD card, stick that card back into the camera, turn the camera on, obviously, and then press play. Don't do anything else first, just press play. Press play will bring up an update or bring up a dialogue that says version up camera. It's great. Uh, something like that. You hit go and off, is, off it goes. And it'll tell you, you know, don't touch any buttons on there. If your battery's not strong, powerful, um, charged enough, it'll tell you that too. It's really easy though. Takes maybe a minute to do the update and that's it. And uh, that's all you got to do. At that point, I would recommend powering your camera off and back on again, just kind of power cycle it and then reformat that card again, just to get rid of that bin file so the camera doesn't get confused. I don't think it would, but let's just, just do that. And that's it. Once you've done that, you have updated your camera. So I have in front of me a, where's the right one? A GH5 that I have updated. 
And then I have a GH5 that I have not updated. So if I need to compare, but I don't think I'm going to need to. I think I've got everything set. Um, and then the GH5S and the G9, none of which I've updated yet because this just came out last night. So um, we are going to be working primarily with the GH5 for which has been updated. So with that said, let's just start going through them. So I'm going to go through all of the features. Now I've set this up kind of nicely here, I think, so that you can see for, uh, for every slide, you're going to see this on the bottom, GH5, GH5S, and G9. If it is a feature that it, if the camera is dimmed out like this, and that means that the feature is not either not applicable or was not added to it. And you'll see in some cases where I'll show that it was a feature that was already there. So some of these new features are completely new to everything. Some of them are new to a specific camera because it's unique to that camera. Um, and some of them are features that were existing in other cameras that have now been added to different ones. Make sense? So we'll make this all clear as we go. So let's get started with it. Now, I can't show everything here, but the, the first ones, the first set of features are about the improvements of autofocus performance. And this is, this is obviously a big deal in here. Um, autofocus tracking performance and video recording has been improved. Now, this is specific to the GH5 and the G9. The GH5S is not listed in there. And I don't know, I can't confirm this, but my belief, my understanding is that that's just because that, that improvement and this isn't the big improvement. This little improvement was already in the GH5S. There had been reports before of the GH5S autofocus being just ever so slightly better than the GH5. So I think that what that was, what reviewers had seen there, has now been added to the other cameras. So that's all that is. So it's, it's a minor, minor adjustment. But hey, every little bit helps, right? The next one, this is the biggie. This is the one that uh, people have been talking about. The autofocus speed at 180 degree shutter has been improved when displaying the shutter speed in degrees. And then it tells you there where to set that. Now, first of all, if you don't know what shutter angle versus shutter speed is, conveniently, I did a video on that last week. We'll link to that up here. That was a big, long explanation of the difference between them, why you care, and so on and so on. So if you don't know what this is, what I'm talking about, do watch that video. But the whole thing was that somebody had figured out that if you set your camera to 179 degree shutter or lower, your autofocus performance improved. There's a good reason for that. And now that... that fix, I guess, if you will, has been rolled into at full 180 degree shutter, which is where you normally want to be. Again, watch the other video to understand why you want that. But now you get the optimal performance there. Now, I just updated my camera last night, so I have not been able to do any side-by-side -side tests. I will do that in the future. I will do a side-by-side -side GH5 old firmware to new firmware, so you can see the difference. But I can say that previously running the shutter angle at 179 degree did make a difference. So, um, so now we're seeing that at 180, which is Tremendous. That is a really, really big deal. So we're super happy to see that. So that is there on, that is on the GH5 and the GH5S, not the G9 because the G9 doesn't work in shutter angle. That said, I believe that the autofocus is probably the same on the G9 because this was a kind of limitation to wire a shutter angle. Can't confirm that. Which incidentally, let me say this. Um, I built this slide deck this morning. I think I got everything right on here. I think I've copied and pasted all the right pieces into the right spots. Um, if there's any mistakes in here. Don't shoot the messenger. I'm doing my best here. This thing just came out last night. I didn't have a whole lot of prep time. So, so there we go. All right, back to it. Next up, autofocus performance of photo shooting. So photography, not video, under low light, low contrast environments has been improved. That is specific to the GH5S. Um, honestly, I was not aware that there was an issue with the GH5S and low light autofocus still performance, but apparently it's now better. So you're going to hear that a lot. Some things are going to go, I didn't know that was a problem, but apparently it's been fixed. So bonus there. Next up, Improvement of body IS, that's the image stabilization, has been improved. Um, it says this is specific to two lenses. There are cases where peripheral, peripheral distortion occurred in video recording while walking. This is very specific. When using the wide zooms, that's the 7 to 14 and the 8 to 18, this bug has been fixed. This applies to the GH5 and the G9 because, of course, the GH5S does not have in body stabilization. So this isn't something that I ever experienced. Uh, maybe I saw it and didn't realize that there was a problem. I don't really know, but that's great. So that is the fixed one using the 8 to 18 and the 7 to 14. Let's get these in the view. <laughs> and the 7 to 14 lens. So if you're using either of these lenses, you should see better performance, no distortion around the edges. If you had seen that distortion before, let me know. Uh, put it in the comments here. We'll, we'll pull up the chat later, which incidentally, if you're watching live, do chat your questions. Do drop your questions in the comments. Make sure that you put Photo Joseph in front of them, like these fine folks here have. That will allow me to find your comment later when we go into the Q&A much more easily. Okay, back to the slides. Uh, next up, improvement of sound recording performance, and this applies to all three cameras. Sound quality has been improved by optimizing the noise reduction performance of internal noise-canceling microphone. Okay, so 
that's talking about the built-in mics on your camera, that they're just basically better now. Um, these are not microphones that you use in a professional environment. They're great for syncing to an external recorder. They're great if you just have nothing else you need to get some audio. It's obviously better than not having sound at all. But you should never, even with these updates, you shouldn't expect to get epic performance out of the microphone on there. But apparently it has improved. If you're wondering what the difference is between using the on-camera mic, the built-in mic, and adding on a on-camera a boom mic. I did a video on that. It's been probably a year by now. We'll link to it down below. Um, but that was a big microphone comparison test. And I'll, I'll put a timestamp in there to the portion where we actually showed the difference between the internal mic and external. Because if you've never done that comparison, if all you've ever used is the mic that's built into the camera, it's an interesting thing to hear and just to see just how much of a difference it really does make. So that's improved on all three cameras. Happy for that. Um, improvement of high resolution mode. This, of course, only applies to the G9 because this is a feature that only exists in the G9. So there's a few things in here. Performance of motion correction has been improved. So that means that if there is motion in the scene, this will improve the results of blending those together. Remember, the high resolution mode involves blending multiple photos. I think it's nine, if I, I think that's right, nine photos together to stitch them together to make a high res picture. If there's movement in there, you may see some artifacting because you are talking about a series of photos that are blended together, kind of like doing HDR when things move. So the, the algorithm that, that figures out what's moving and tries to make it look like it wasn't moving is apparently better. What I don't know and I don't think this is going to apply, but if you remember, I did a video on the um, on doing long exposures with the G9 high resolution mode a while ago. We'll link to that one up here if you haven't seen that. That's a big fun one to watch. Um, I don't know if this is going to affect that because this doesn't specifically call out long exposure, but it'll be interesting. I will have to test that at some point and see if it makes any difference. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, you'll watch that video and you will see. So we don't know if that's been fixed or not, but... Uh, and like I said, well, I shouldn't say fixed. Don't know if that's been addressed or not. Because as I said, when I recorded that video, the weird things that we were saying, I don't believe is a, a bug. I think it's just a artifact of this process of blending multiple exposures together. Again, if you don't know what I'm talking about, watch that video. Point is, performance of motion correction has been improved. Uh, next is a minimum of F11 aperture can now be used. It was at F8. So if you're looking for those larger depth of field photos, you want to be able to stop down more. You used to only be able to stop down to F8. And now you can stop down to F11 when shooting in that mode. So that's cool. And then the last one, I never ran into this, but it says there were cases where the high resolution more mode was forced quit when switching to playback mode. This bug has been fixed. So I never ran into that, but bug fixes are always welcome. New functions. Now we get into the new fun stuff. And this is really cool. This is, incidentally, these features here came out of the GX9. That is one of the newer small cameras. And um, this is a really cool feature that got added into there. And I'm stoked to see this get added into the GH series of cameras. So what this is, is a new monochrome D for dynamic mode has been added to the photo style. But more importantly, the grain effect. So the grain effect can now be added and adjusted in the photo style. So this is something we are actually going to look at so I can show you exactly how this is set up. And I, I took some photos last night with it um, so you could see what they look like. And it's really cool. So the idea here is that you've got, uh, when you're shooting black and white film, it would if you got a really high ISO film like a you know, T-Max 6400 or something, and, and 3200, and you shot it at, um, uh, and you're shooting a black and white with this high high so film, you got this really beautiful green pattern to it. For those of us who shot film, it's like, oh, that was really nice. And one of the things that we will often do in software, in Lightroom or Photoshop, whatever, is add grain to an image to make it have that kind of film look to it. Well, you can now add grain in this dynamic black and white profile in the camera. It's a new grain pattern and it looks beautiful. So first I'm going to show you how to set it up and then we're going to look at some pictures that I shot the other night with it. So let's see, are we up here? We are. Let's take a look at this. All right. So we're just looking through my camera here. This is the G85 that's been updated. If I go into the, let's go to the camera mode in here and here I can actually do it like this. Go to the camera mode in here and uh, where is it? Where are we looking? Here we go. Photo style. So there's standards, but it's set to right now. And we'll go through the, the different options and you'll see we'll get to there's monochrome and L monochrome we had before. And then L monochrome D. That's the dynamic one. Notice at the very bottom of this list down here. See, the way this has always been, you have adjustments for contrast, sharpness, noise reduction, color tone, and filter effect. If you can add a filter effect to it. The new one on here is this grain effect. And so it goes from off to low, standard, and high. And this is, by the way, this is only, let's go back up to the main selection. You'll see this show up under the three monochrome modes, and that's it. So as I go, as I go to natural, vivid, that film grain thing goes away, standard, V-log, and so on. 
It is only on the monochrome one. So L monochrome, D, L monochrome, and straight monochrome. So I'm going to do D because that's the new one. We go down here and we set this from off. Now let me go ahead and focus on something on the frame here. And let's get back that, let's get that mode back up here. And let's switch over so you can see the whole thing. And as I go through here, you should start to see, it's going to be a little subtle on the screen here, but you start to see some of the grain, especially in the out of focus areas, you can see that really coming through. And it, you see the, the image does get a little herky-jerky in there. This is just an artifact of, of uh, having this like crazy filter being applied in real time. But it looks really good. So let me, let me pull up some pictures in here in Lightroom that I shot and imported yesterday. And this is just my little one here having dinner. And let's go full screen on this. And you can see this really nice grain pattern. It's a little under, so it's a really nice grain pattern showing up in there. Let's zoom in a bit closer. Some of these might be out of focus because he does tend to move a lot. But it's a beautiful, beautiful grain pattern that we're getting here. Now, if you're looking at this going, okay, it just looks like noise. I don't understand. What's the big deal? I, I'm a huge proponent of adding grain to pictures. I've, I talk about this a lot when I'm talking about editing in Lightroom or any other app. And a lot of apps do have a grain function, but a lot of those apps' grain functions, I think that was proper English, uh, don't look good. They basically just look like noise, like Gaussian noise. And Gaussian noise is not a film grain pattern. They are two separate things. They are apparently just a random sprinkling of black and white pixels, but it's not. It, when you have a real film pattern, it actually looks different. There is a tangible difference to it. You see it and you go, ooh, that looks like film versus, oh, that just looks like digital noise. So this is a really, really nice one. I've looked at a lot of grain patterns and I think that this is beautiful. So that said, a couple other quick flip throughs. I th and we're here, we're looking at it 100%. So it's obviously, this is cranked up to high. I cranked it up to 11 because I just, I like it. Um, but you can see this is really, really nice in there. So I'm very, very happy with that. I'm stoked to see that come into those cameras and, uh, and away we go. Hey guys, real quick, I want to do a little quick little ad insert here, kind of a house ad. A few things I want to mention to you. Um, first of all, don't forget about our value for value proposition. If you feel like you've learned something from today's show, consider going to photojoseph.com support. Lots of different ways to support me through there to support the channel. And one of the best ways you can do that is to actually join me in India. Who wants to go to India? January 30th to February 9th of 2019, I'm going to India, taking a photography workshop out there. You can get all the information at photojoseph.com slash India. That is going to be an immense, immense amount of fun. So if you're interested in a big old photography workshop, go check that thing out. And much sooner than that is June 22nd to 24th. I'll be in Chicago at the Out of Chicago Conference. A whole bunch of awesome photographers, myself included, are going to be out there doing some teaching and education. Uh, you can get a discount of $50 by using the code photojoseph. Just head to that URL on the screen and, uh, and check that out. And hopefully, I will see some of you in Chicago, and hopefully, I'll see some of you in India. All right, back to our show. Next up, new functions, more new functions. This is applied to all three cameras in here. And we're going to take a look at these and explain what all of them mean. The first one, focus ring lock has been added to the custom menu, which disables focus ring operation to, the, to lock the focus. And when I first saw that, I thought, wait, hold on. So you're disabling the focus control when you're in manual focus. Well, I don't understand what the point of that is. And then as soon as I turned it on, I went, oh, okay, now I get it. So first of all, let's see how to do this. Uh, let's switch, I'm gonna take this out of my black and white mode here real quick. Let me get this back up to standard. And let's switch to look at the menus in here, bring the menu back up. And according to my notes, it is in the custom wrench page 4.7. So incidentally, you'll see this on here, so you can screenshot this. Um, I've labeled on here where these are. So the C wrench, that's the wrench with the C next to it, page 4 out of 7. That is incidentally for the GH5, because that's what I'm using. If you're, finding, if you're looking for this on the GH5S or G9, you might find it in a slightly different place, but it'll be, it'll be maybe a different page, but it'll be the same place. So good luck, hope you can find it. There's a lot of menus in here these days. Okay, so back to this. I'm looking for page four or seven in the C-Wrench. So I go to the C-Wrench, and it's under operation, but I can just go through here and scroll. You see up in the top right where it says four out of seven? That's what I'm looking for. And I'm looking for, what am I looking for? Focus ring lock. Uh, focus ring lock right at the top. Okay, so it's off by default so that it focuses. Can we turn it on? Okay, so now that it's on, I go in here, I switch the camera into manual focus mode, and I go to, to adjust the focus, and I'm adjusting the focus here, and nothing's happening, and you go, <laughs> Okay, how are you supposed to focus? Well, here's why this is useful. I can still touch to focus. I can touch the screen to focus, right? So I want to focus on that camera there. So that locks in. Now I can't accidentally bump focus moving the manual ring. If you're doing video, 
Here's why this is important. Say you're doing a video shoot. You set up your camera, it's on a tripod, it's a locked shot, you focus on your talent or whatever you're focusing on, and you can focus by touching on the screen, touch on their face, it focuses on their face. What you don't want is someone to accident or you to accidentally bump that focus ring while you're changing the aperture or anything else in there. You don't want it to change. So this allows you to lock that, to disable that ring. Now that I know what it's for, as soon as I turned it on, like I said, I went, oh, because I've had that situation. You set it all up and you're like, wait, I, I, oh, I bumped the focus ring. So super duper, very, very happy to see that. Next up, white balance slash ISO slash exposure button has been added, which enables adjustments of white balance ISO exposure only while the exposure compensation button is pressed. Okay, this sounds bizarre, and this is another one of those, I read this five times and went, I don't get it. Once I looked at it, I got it. So it is on C wrench page 37. So let's go back into the C wrench. We're in the custom wrench. We want to go to page three of seven. And here's the one right here, white balance ISO exposure button. Here's the difference, after pressing the button or while pressing the button. That means that do you push white balance and release it and then make the adjustment, or do you have to press and hold it to make the adjustment? I think that the reason for that is that some other camera manufacturers do it that way. I, I kind of want to say Nikon does it that way, where you press and hold to adjust the dial. So now you can switch it. How do you want to do it? Do you want to press and hold to adjust it, or you just want to press release and then adjust it? Uh, press release and then adjust is the default. That's the way it's always been. So now you have the ability to add the or enable the function that only works while you're pressing it down. So cool. Yeah, we like options. Incidentally, let me just throw this out here real quick. I, and I'm, I've been a Lumix user for many years. I was Canon before that. This is a legitimate question. For those of you out there that are shooting other camera platforms, do other manufacturers, do any other manufacturers update as often and as generously, I would say, as the Lumix lineup, as Panasonic does? I don't know. Um, and so if you say, oh yeah, Canon's doing it, Nikon's doing it, Panasonic, uh, uh, Sony's doing it, great. Uh, but I don't know, because back when I was shooting not these guys, these updates didn't happen. I mean, if there was an update, it was a bug fix that had maybe one feature in it. And um, basically, if you wanted a new feature, you had to buy a new camera. So just keep in mind that GH5 has been out now for what, year and a half or year, year and something? And uh, we're seeing these major new features coming in, which is pretty slick. I gotta say, double thumbs up to Panasonic. And yes, I know, I'm sponsored, but still, a double thumbs up to Panasonic. Okay, next, uh, where are we? Last one there, dial has been added to the custom Operation lock setting. Dial has been added. Okay, I didn't remember what this one is. Now I have to look this one up myself. So we're going to go custom wrench, page 307. Oh, oh, this is it. Okay, it is on here. Operation lock setting. Got it. See, too many things. Bottom of the page there, 307 at the bottom, operation lock setting. Now you can turn on which functions, cursor, joystick, touchscreen, dial, and display button, you want to be locked when you press the lock button. Say what? Okay, so the camera has always had this ability to have a one button touch to lock certain functions. So you push this and now your touch screen is disabled, certain buttons are disabled. Dial has now been added to that. So if we go in here and you see, I basically have, I've got almost everything on. Let's just turn like joystick on and cursor on. So now everything is turned on. And you see at the bottom it says assign operation lock to an FN button. Okay, so now I'm gonna exit out of here and I'm going to press and hold on FN4 at the very bottom and it pops up my custom setting for the um, for the function button, uh, sorry, for the custom button programming. And I can set this to whatever I want. And what it's saying is now you set this to operation lock setting, which is on page three, which I have saved, I made a note of. Um, uh, operation lock, there we go. So we set that. And now when I push, FN, push FN4, you see it says in the middle of the screen, operation lock. Now if I try to use anything like touch the screen, Notice up in the top left, it's flashing operation lock. If I try to use a joystick, it says operation lock. I press that FN button again, and it says operation unlock, and now my camera is back to normal use. So if you find in certain setups that you're doing things and you're, you know, you're hitting a button you didn't mean to set and you didn't mean to hit, if this is a common occurrence, you can go in there and set it up so that one of your buttons will actually lock all the other buttons so that you have that, uh, don't have to have, don't have to worry about bumping that button accidentally. Um, and so what this has added is the dials. So the dials have been added to that function. Whew. Okay, it's a lot of stuff. Next, live view boost has been added, which makes it easy to check the composition on the monitor in a low light environment. This is added to the GH5 and the G9. Um, oh, I think I'm. I think it was already on the GH5S. So I forgot to mark that one. Um, I'm gonna gotta be honest with you. I I I I, I don't know. I try. I went into low light. I'm like turning. Turn I can't see a difference. So. 
I don't know exactly what it's doing, unfortunately. It's supposed to make it easier to see. I think, I think it's basically just brightening up the scene when you're in a really low light situation, I think. But I'm sorry, I don't have a really good explanation of that because I've tried it and I can't see the difference, so I'm not sure what's actually happening. I must not be in the right low light situation or low enough light situation. I kind of went into the closet and I, I don't know. So sorry, but that's an awesome feature. I just don't know what it is. All right, next up, night mode has been added, which reduces glaring on the screens when recording in low light environments. This has been added to the GH5. It was already existing on the GH5S and G9. This is a really, really cool function where your screen goes red so that you don't blow out your night vision when you're shooting at night. So let's say uh, we'll set up how to do this. We go into the menu. It is on wrench page two of five. So I go to the main wrench menu and I'm looking for page two of five and night mode. There it is. So you see you have two options. You can, uh, you can turn the night mode on the monitor or on the, and or on the LVF, the live viewfinder. Now you don't actually see it on the output here, but I have just enabled that. Now I have to do a little switcheroo here, flip this around so that you can see. Here we go, we'll go for the close up on here. And I know it's, let me pick this up there. So see how the screen is all red? That is the night view. So let me turn this back off. This is really hard to do backwards. Off, off, there we go. So there's normal and there's the night view. It doesn't come out on the HDMI out, which is why you're not seeing it on the screen through the camera, but, um, but it does show up on this monitor or in the viewfinder and or you can set it to either one. And then you can program that to a function button as well. So if you're shooting in low light often, that is a really cool feature to have. And like I said, that was in the uh, G9 and GH5S previously. Now it's in the GH5 as well. Okay, next up. Maximum 20x enlarged view is available in manual focus assist. This is already in the GH5S that has now been added to the GH5 and the G9. All this means is that when you're in manual focus mode and you hit the kind of zoom in button to really check critical focus, you can now zoom all the way to 20x where it used to be 10x. So I think I can show this to you here. Let's go to this view. I'm in manual focus. So, oh, <laughs> and I still have my manual focus ring disabled. I'll just punch in anyway. There we go. I'm going to punch in anyway. So you see up there in the top left, it says 20x. As I zoom out, the red sparkles you're seeing are focus peaking. So now it does go all the way up to 20x, where it used to only go to 10. So again, helpful for critical, critical focusing. Now i got to figure out how to turn my manual focus ring back on. <laughs> all righty. Um, Let's see here, power, oh, this is another good one. Power slash wireless indicator has been added in the setup menu, which enables turning off the status indicator and wireless connection lamp. This is new to the GH5, was already existing on the GH5S and G9. This is another one of those, thank you. If you've ever used, if you use the wireless connection, whether you're tethering or you've just done the Bluetooth connection to your phone so you get your GPS locations, that little blue light is so bright, and now you can turn that off in your camera. So it is in the wrench page one of five. So let's go into that wrench, that, the standard wrench menu, page one of five, power wireless indicator. We can go in here, and we can turn it off. And now the light is gone. You still get a, um, oh, it tells you, uh, LED does not light up while wireless is running. Be careful when using the device in places where usage of electronic equipment is restricted. Oh, I guess that's, like if you're on the airplane, um, and you're not supposed to be using wireless. Well, I think you kind of can these days. Anyway, if you're anywhere where this says don't use Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, um, just keep in mind that you no longer have that bright blue light in your face telling you that you're using it. But what you do get, I don't think it's enabled on here, it's not enabled on here, but what you do see is a faint little uh, Bluetooth symbol, GPS symbol, if you're using the GPS thing that shows up on the display. So it's not like you completely don't know, it's just you no longer have this really bright blue light in your face, which I am very, very happy about that. Okay, here's an interesting one. This is specific to the GH5, and this is also specific to those who have updated the V-Log update. And this is not on the GH5S, which uh, at least not according to the specs, I have not yet updated my GH5S, so it could simply be that it was left out of the spec sheet accidentally, but I don't think I messed this one up. Um, I think it is only on the GH5. And it says that the, the profiles like 709, V-Log, and then the V-Log View Assist, we'll, we'll talk about that in a moment, in photo styles can be used in photo shooting. So what that means is that you can shoot stills that have a log profile to them. Now, when I first saw this, I got really excited because of what I thought it meant. And then I started playing with it and it doesn't do what I thought it was gonna do. So I have to, I have to admit that I'm not really sure what the 
point is of this? And I was hoping to get an answer for this before today's show, and I didn't. So if I figure out that it's something that I'm completely missing the point on, I will do another video about that. But what I was hoping, you know how when you're shooting in log, you can add a LUT, a custom LUT to the camera. We did a video on that a while ago. We'll link to that up here. We did a video on how to create your own custom LUTs and put them on your GH5 and off you go. I was hoping that this meant that I could shoot stills that would have that LUT applied to them so that I could build a completely customized look. Instead of just using natural scenery, portrait mode, and so on, I could build a completely customized look, load that into the camera, and get JPEGs that had that look applied to it. That was what I thought it meant. But it isn't. So your JPEGs come out looking like they were shot log without any LUT applied to them. Now, that you could then take that into Lightroom or something and add a LUT to it, but in my mind, the real value point would be having that built into the camera itself. So essentially giving the ability to have a completely customized look in camera. We're not getting that. The raw file, incidentally, is identical, whether you're shooting in, just like any other profile, if you're shooting color, black and white, um, or vlog, your raw file is the same. It is always the raw file. It is, you know, has no color profile applied. So this only applies to the JPEG, just like every other color profile, uh, but it's not applying the LUT. So unless I'm missing something, I hope that I am, but I dug around, I couldn't find a way to do it. So I'm not quite sure the value of it. Maybe it's more of a thing if you're, if you're on a film set and you want to shoot some stills that are going to match the movie footage so that the colorist can go in and make the stills match. Maybe that's the value of it. Um, but other than that, I don't know. I was hoping for the, the thing that I talked about. So I'm going to keep pushing for that because I think that'd be really cool, right? If you could completely make your own custom look, load a LUT into the camera, and have JPEGs out of the camera that look the way that you want them to look, no matter what that look is, I think that'd be awesome. So, so that's what I'm hoping for. Uh, back in here, LUT monitor display and LUT HDMI display can be used in playback mode. This is, now this is not stills, this is back to video world. This is actually really, really cool. On the GH5S, I realized when I was shooting log on here that, well, let me back up. When you're shooting log, what you see is a very flat profile. You can load a LUT, we talked about that already, you can load a LUT onto the screen so that you are seeing the image as it will look once it's graded. We're talking video now. You can see what it'll look like once it's graded, or at least give you a, well, the, the most common, the built-in one is a 709 look, so it basically looks like normal video as opposed to the log file. It just makes it easier when you're looking at the camera to see what it's going to look like. But the video you get out is still that very flat log profile. Great. On the GH5, when you, previous to this update, when you hit play on footage that you shot log, you saw it in the log profile. The LUT that you had loaded was ignored. You couldn't see the playback with the LUT applied. On the GH5S, though, you could. First time I played it back, I, I, it actually freaked me out because I thought, oh my god, I wasn't shooting log. And then I realized, oh no, it's actually playing the LUT, it's loading the LUT on playback. Very, very cool. So that function has now been added to the GH5 as well. So when you hit play and you're on your log footage, you can have your LUT loaded in there and see that. And you can just toggle that on and off so you can see what it looks like flat and you can see what it looks like with the LUT applied. So that was super, super cool. Very, very happy to see that. And again, to do this, you have to have the, um, the log update, which is a, a paid upgrade for the GH5 to be able to do this. Okay. Next. Other improvements, again, uh, focus ring lock. Oh, because these are all a lot of the functions we just talked about. Focus ring lock, e-stabilization video, mic record level display, live view boost, night mode, and L monochrome D can be assigned to the function button that works in recording mode. So basically what that is saying, these are functions that you used to not be able to, to program into the one of the FN buttons, or it just didn't exist before because it's a new feature, that you now can. So uh, it's one of those things, like the, the microphone uh, level display, that's actually, that's one that I know I personally requested so that I could easily toggle the microphone display on and off. So I'm very happy to see that one of my feature requests made it in there. I don't know if it was me that, me that got it in, but I'm going to take credit for it because I know that I requested it. Whew, almost done here. Next one under other improvements, LUT monitor display, LUT HDMI display, and night mode can be assigned to function buttons. So this is same as the previous slide, but this is specific to the GH5 and previously existed in the GH5S and G9. Oh, actually, I, I take that back. The LUT stuff doesn't belong in the G9 one, so that's my bad on the slide creation. But um, the LUTs only apply to the GH5 and GH5S. But anyway, point is, now you can program those into function buttons as well, so yay. Uh, this is one specific to the GH5 and the GH5S. Vector scopes can be displayed on screen while adjusting white balance. This is actually incredibly important because your vector scopes allow you critical balancing of cameras, critical um, adjustment of your camera settings, your, your lighting, and all kinds of other things, whatever it is you're doing, to, to make your image look the way you want it to look. And it, it used to be when you're adjusting white balance that you didn't see the 
the vector scope at the same time. So you'd have to make an adjustment, turn it back on, make an adjustment, turn it back on. Now you can just see it while you're adjusting it. So yay to that. And it is possible now to choose images from group display, such as burst in burst shots in the raw processing mode. So and this applies to all cameras. So you have um, you have the ability, if you're shooting raw in these cameras, to pull up the raw file and process it as a JPEG using any of the color profiles that are in there. So if you weren't shooting raw plus JPEG, but you went, oh, I really want to make this picture, I want to give this picture that black and white grainy look that I love, but I didn't have it shooting raw plus JPEG, you can now take that raw file and make it a JPEG using that profile. Cool. That's always been that way. Now you can actually select burst shots as well. Because you may have seen when you're shooting in the really, really high speed burst, you actually get, instead of getting like 50 files at once on the camera, you'll see a thing that says almost like a movie file, one out of 50 or whatever the frame numbers are. Uh, now you can select individual raw files out of there, where I guess you couldn't before. That's not something I ever ran into, but apparently that's the way it is. Ah, next, restarting time from sleep mode has been shortened. That's great. Um, when using the image app and Bluetooth connection, so that's always good. Yeah, there was always a little bit of a delay in there, so that has been shortened. Very nice. You can choose to shorten the time of remote operation and image transfer or remote shutter control in setup Bluetooth returning from sleep mode. You know, I actually did not look at this before, so I don't even know what this is talking about. Let's go quick. So we're set up. We're on the wrench menu setup. Um, Bluetooth. Oops. Bluetooth. Bluetooth. Um, oh, it's off. Ooh, I don't know if this is going to... Yeah, this may not this may not be something we want to play with live. Um, you can shorten the time of remote operation and image transfer or remote shutter control. See, now it's got a pair to my, I haven't set this one up. Um, anyway, anything that's shortening time is a good thing, right? Yay. Okay, we're going to leave it at that. And, oh, I like this too. Remaining battery status is indicated by a quarter gauge, indicating approximately 25% per gauge. This is already on the GH5S and the G9. It is now added to the GH5. The difference there is quite simply that the GH5 had, the battery indicator was divided into thirds. Now it's divided into quarters. Just gives you a little bit more accurate representation of your battery status. That's all that is. That's nice. This is the last one. There were cases where folder names were garbled when connecting wirelessly with Windows 10-based PC. This bug has been fixed. So this is not something that I've ever encountered because I do not use a Windows 10-based PC. However, if it is something you've encountered, then it has now been fixed. So that is all of them. Whew. That was a lot. That was a lot, and that was a long show. So we've got a ton of people watching live right now, which is absolutely fantastic. Those of you who have questions, get those questions ready. Drop them into the live chat. Make sure you put Photo Joseph in front of them so that I can see the question, and I will do my best to answer it in the Q&A starting right now. Now.